the water or hydrologic cycle differs from most other nutrient cycles in that water usually remains chemically unchanged throughout the cycle. The major reservoirs for water are the oceans, which cover about three quarters of the Earth's surface and contain over 97% of the available water. The hydrologic cycle is driven by solar energy, which causes water to evaporate into the atmosphere, and by gravity, which draws the water back to the Earth in the form of precipitation, rain, snow, sleet, and dew. Most of the evaporation of water occurs over the oceans, and much of this water simply returns to the oceans as precipitation. Water that does fall on the land takes a variety of paths. A percentage returns to the atmosphere as the result of evaporation from lakes and streams and the land itself. Much runs off the land to the oceans via river networks, while a small amount enters underground reservoirs called aquifers. The rest is taken up by living organisms, most of which are about 70% water. Much of the water absorbed by plants is returned to the atmosphere as a result of evaporation from their leaves. But a small amount of the absorbed water is combined with carbon dioxide during photosynthesis to produce high energy molecules like glucose. Eventually, these high energy molecules are broken down during cellular respiration and the water and CO2 they contain released back into the atmosphere. Herbivores, carnivores, and other heterotrophs acquire water from their food and by drinking it where they can find it. Like plants, heterotrophs return much of the water they acquire back to the atmosphere via cellular respiration and evaporation and additionally through excretion. Although the hydrologic cycle would continue in the absence of life on Earth, the distribution of life and the composition of biological communities depends on and to a great extent is determined by the patterns of precipitation and evaporation that exist on our planet. For example, the hydrologic cycle differs considerably in deserts and rainforests, and this is reflected in the composition of their respective living communities. In deserts, a lack of water limits biological productivity, while in rainforests where water is abundant, biological productivity is much higher, and any limits placed on biological productivity are the result of a scarcity of nutrients in the soil. 